Okay, hey everyone. So, very happy to be here. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, LAGO, our uh, open source uh, project. But first, we'll start with a little story. So, around two weeks ago, when I, sorry, when I was uh, preparing the slides for this lecture, uh, I woke up in the morning and I saw that uh, LAGO builds were broken. And uh, as you might have guessed, LAGO is a Python project. And the first thing I thought was, okay, so I must have pushed too many commits during the night and uh, I broke something, which usually what happens. But soon I saw that our other Python projects are also broken. And it turns out that what happened was that Setup Tools released a new version, but it was broken. And very quickly I saw there was a GitHub issue opened and it started um, very innocent, no model named six. And of course, if uh, I'm sure most of you know, but Setup Tools is probably the building block of most Python packaging today. So it was quite critical. And uh, at the beginning, people were pretty polite and asked for it to be fixed. But as you might have guessed, time passed and people were less uh, polite. And there was a PR open already to fix it. But eventually, someone said, everything is broken. Please merge it as soon as possible. It must be fixed. And uh, then the maintainer, eventually, I think it took around 24 hours. He probably went to sleep, did a release, and then he saw what happened. And it was fixed pretty quickly. And of course, this is an open source project, so there's no one to blame. And this sort of stuff happened. And the setup tools is not the point here, of course. So. Uh, he wrote one thing that uh, caught my mind, and he said at the end, perhaps Setup Tools test suite needs a test that it can be installed in a clean environment. And that's what we're going to talk about today, LAGO, and how it can help you build isolated, clean environments for system testing. So, first, who we are. Um, first, my colleague Corey will present himself. Gal. Hey all, my name is Gal Ben Chaim. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, a maintainer of the Lago project. Really excited to be here with you to talk about Lago, and I will come back in a few slides. <laughs> okay, so my name is Nadav, and uh, we both work at, the, at Red Hat, at the Ovid uh, DevOps teams. And Ovid is a great project, but uh, not the topic of our conversation today. And also, we both maintain the Lago project. So, <clears throat> first we're going to talk about what is the problem we're trying to solve with LAGO, which is system tests. Uh, later we'll see what interfaces LAGO provides to help that, and eventually we will bring it all together and see how we can write tests that use LAGO. And I think, at the end, you should be... Uh, you, 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 will, you might think the system testing could be much easier than it is today. So, before we jump into uh, Lago, first we need to understand the problem we're trying to solve, and that is testing. So in our cost context, we're talking about three different types of tests. And of course, there are many more, but this is what's relevant to system testing. And the first thing is unit testing. So unit testing is uh, pretty obvious, and I think everyone knows it. Uh, it means I'm trying to isolate it, the smallest piece of functionality or, or, or uh, function even in my application, and I'm going to test it. So if I have a simple function that does addition and I pass it 5 uh, and 5, I expect to get a 10. And then I'm just checking the output. And what's interesting in unit testing in our context is that unit testing, I'm saying I don't care about any other dependencies. So if my application is let's say it does addition, and what I need is a database because uh, addition is uh, highly demanded today, and I'm going to cache it. I really don't care about the database when I'm doing unit testing. I'm supposed to mock everything out. So I'm not going to install anything. I just probably going to work more harder in making, uh, in mocking the environment I'm going to test. And <clears throat> that leads us to the next testing, which is functional testing. In functional testing, um, <clears throat> you're going to test the functionality of your application. And usually that involves uh, 
more than one component. So you would have maybe several functions, several services, several, ser several classes, but uh, you might or might not mock what you're uh, going to test. So if you go back to the database example, let's say my application is supports five different databases such as SQLite and MySQL, I'm probably going to say in functional tests many times, either I'm going to mock it out or I'm going to use SQLite because that's what I feel comfortable with in my context of functional testing. And what I really care about is the functionality of the application, not really what the database or how it behaves with my application. So that, I think, uh, brings us to system testing. And when, again, I tried to find a strict definition of system testing, which is what we do all day, I didn't find anything I, you could open Wikipedia and it will state exactly what it is. But I think the thing I found best is test the system as a whole. And what that means in our eyes is that when you're doing system tests, you're supposed to mimic the exact behavior your user will do if you use the application. So let's say you have an installation guide or your instructions or GitHub, install my application this way. That's what you're supposed to do in system testing. And that shows us the differences between functional and unit testing. When we were doing functional and unit testing, we really don't care. We, uh, how, is it, uh, how the application is installed. We just want to get as soon as possible to the functional or the, the unit testing. While in system testing, you're really testing the system as a whole. So if we go back to our database example, if I'm supporting three different databases, I might need to install all of them, and I might even need to install different versions of them in order to actually test my application. So system tests are challenging <laughs> because first thing, as we said, you can't really mock anything. You need a real thing. So I nev when I'm developing my application, I'm not messing with how to install Postgres. I don't care about it. But when I'm doing system tests, I suddenly need to think how those, are go how those databases are going to be installed or whatever are the dependencies of my applications. Secondly, you can't have hacks. And what I mean by hacks that usually if you would clone your any major Python project that has a testing suit, you would open the test suit and then you would find this file. It might be hidden or have a nice name. And usually it will be set up the testing environment. And what you will see there, line by line, are all sorts of hacks to getting to the functional or unit testing quickly. And that's OK, because when you're doing functional tests, you don't care. You want to test the functionality. But when you're doing system tests, your users won't use those hacks, and they will probably uh, need to install it the way you tell them. So uh, that brings another difficulty. And eventually, when you see those two, usually you will say, OK, so I need external providers. I need to test my application. So now I'm going to build, uh, let's say, several VMs, virtual machines, and I'm going to put them perhaps on the cloud. And then uh, I'm building an inf infrastructure for testing. And when my application grows, I might say, OK, so that's expensive. So I need uh, to build my own lab because it's cheaper. And then you need to maintain it. But what external providers brings you eventually are also external failures. Because system tests are complex. But when you're using external providers, they become even more complex. Because now what you need is to also decide whether your failure was due to the cloud not being available or uh, the, ac the actual thing you wanted to test. And finally, uh, traditional testing frameworks don't address system testing. And what I mean here, like a few years ago, Nose, was, Nose testing framework was very, very popular. And now we have PyTest. And PyTest is even better than Nose, and it has constant improvement. I think there was a new release uh, three days ago. And each time people are thinking of new ideas, how uh, unit testing and functional tests can be improved, while system tests are sort of left behind. So that's what uh, LAGO is trying to solve. So what is LAGO? First, it's a virtualization testing framework, which means it uses virtualization in order to run tests. That's it. And it's written purely in Python, currently Python 2. We have some plans to port it to Python 3. Um, but that's the current situation. 
And the core idea of Lago is that it takes your environment and shrinks it, shrinks it into a single file, and it's going to run on a single machine. Not two, not three, just one place where you're going to create an isolated, virtualized environment. And when I mean virtual here, I mean virtual machine, not a virtual env of uh, pip or Python. And of course, uh, we use other great open source uh, projects that we wouldn't be here without, so they're listed there. OK, so how does it look like? We have the Lago init file which is, uh, as you can see, it, it, it is separated to domains and nets. Domains basically mean virtual machines. And I have the written uh, test VM01. And what's really important to understand here is that what's written there, it means that Lago, which really we see shortly, will take it in two commands and create virtual machines on my laptop. And I specifically say laptop because it's meant to be run locally it can, of course, also be run on their servers, but it's meant to be run locally, and we work really hard that it will work uh, without uh, any special hardware. And over there, we see all those uh, uh, hardware specifications for memory networks, and that's less important now. But one thing I do want to talk about is the template name. And what we see there is FC25 base, which means Fedora 25 base, and it's pretty much the same as a cloud image you would get if you would search um, get Fedora 25 uh, cloud image on Google. So <clears throat> um, those are the images. And um, what's important to understand that it's a vanilla image. It doesn't have anything on it, nothing installed, a clean environment. So. Um, that's how Lago uh, deals with VMs, and that's sort of the state machine that uh, each VM is going to go through. So first, you have the Lago init file, which is in YAML syntax. It's supposed to be uh, readable uh, by humans, unlike uh, JSON. And then you run Lago init. Your environment is started. And then it's saved on disk. From there, it's pretty simple. When the environment is saved on your disk, it means that it can be started, stopped, which is equivalent to pl unplugging the machine from uh, the electricity, and eventually destroyed. And we'll see Lago environments are destroyed pretty quickly. They're meant to be short-lived, and uh, then they just go away. And before we jump into the how it looks in Python, I'm just uh, having an example of how the Lago's CLI looks like. So except the fancy colors, what's important here that it took 10 seconds, and that includes uh, some work we do on the image itself. So uh, that's in it. And then when you want to start that virtual machine, it takes six seconds. So it, altogether, it took uh, 16 seconds to have that here, only one virtual machine on my laptop. And the previous example was quite simple, but it can be very get much, much more complicated. So. Here we have this data center, and I'll just go quickly what it has. It has three VMs, different RAM specs. It could have different CPU types. It has three networks, DHCP, DNS, even a storage server with 100 gigabyte of disk. And the init file is just one. This is a one init file that is going to describe the entire environment. Uh, I didn't put it here because it's longer, but it's just one. And again, that's the data center. And when I run it on my laptop, it's going all to be on my laptop in around 25 seconds in it plus start. So um, that's nice, I think. OK. So until now, we saw what is system testing. And or we talked about what is system testing and what are the differences. And we saw what Lago can provide. And now we'll see how we can use it inside Python. So the first thing I will do is init, which is exactly the same as uh, I did from the CLI. I'm running init. And I'm passing here the config, which is the Lago init file. And you can see my work there is temp, which is a good choice, because as I said, those environments are meant to be short-lived, and they're not going to be persistent. And when that command returns from my interactive session, I'm going to get the env object. And now the env object in embodies the entire environment, and I can do actions on it, such as start, stop. And I can also get some metadata about the virtual machines. So 
what sort of actions? There you see the first thing is start. This means the virtual machines are started on my laptop. And the next is I'm getting the VMs. So what I see is keys, it, it returns a dict, and I see uh, keys and some uh, Lago internal object that presents the VMs. And I have some metadata here, it's the CPU vendor. And most importantly, which will be, will be our gating to tests, is the SSH. So Lago ensures SSH is working on those. Uh, you don't need to take care of your uh, SSH keys. It's always going to be bootable and with an IP. And it always returns a tuple, which is the standard output, standard error, and uh, the exit code. So uh, that's nice. And now uh, I've written some examples with PyTest, but it can be anything else. Uh, it doesn't have to be PyTest or uh, any specific framework. So if you know PyTest, you might get familiar with uh, it. It I think it will make sense. Um, so here I'm creating, and, and again, if you don't know PyTest, then where you see the PyTest fixture, you can just ignore it, switch it with a context, context manager or a generator. It's all the same. And we see the exact same init command, but what I have in the last three lines, in I'm doing start, yield, and destroy. So what this means is whoever is going to use this function is going to get an object which represents it can be one VM and it can be an entire data center. But that whoever is going to consume that, which will be our tests as we see shortly, is going to use that and it doesn't need to care what is the state of the environment because I know when this yield returns or the gen generator ends, the environment is going to be destroyed and nothing is going to be left. So um, and now adding a test. So I have my environment here and then I'm running, I'm, I wrote this really, really simple and perhaps naive test, which all it does, it says, okay, go into that virtual machine and tell me, is my application importable? So it looks a bit dummy, but if you think about it, when we're talking in the context of system testing, that might be the first thing we want to check, that even if our application is uh, importable on a clean environment. As we said, it's a vanilla image, it has nothing on it. And sure, you might ask, so how did it get installed? But that we'll see, in a, we'll see that in a second. And <clears throat> another small thing we have is that we um, we destroy the environment, but we leave no traces behind because we want to make the environment isolated and reproducible. But uh, sometimes, especially in system testing, what you would want to do is you want to investigate what was the state of the system. And what Lago allows you is to define artifacts, which is a, a fancy name for uh, files. So what Lago will do when you have those artifacts on a collect command, it will take them from the virtual machine. And what's nice about that, that even if you did something really, really wrong in your tests, then it will still know how to take them, even if the VM is down. So it's going to basically look into the file the VM was at and extract those logs. So even if you broke up the VM, you'll still have something to investigate eventually. So uh, that's here I'm running collect. It's pretty simple. Before the environment is destroyed, I'm extracting the logs. And this is how it looks like. So if someone didn't listen up until now and is going to see that slide, he's going to say, OK, so this is just unit testing. And there's nothing important here. Uh, but this is actually could be full end-to-end -end system testing, where my entry point is just PyTest, and it's running on my laptop. Here I'm running PyTest and just telling it to be extra, extra, extra verbose. And I think that's nice. And eventually, the logs are going to be collected, and I'm going to get this nice directory structure where I can separate between the tests and between the VMs. And if you noticed, of course, I'm going back one slide, the test failed. And the reason is because I didn't install anything. So now Gal is going to take how, to talk about how Lago can help you install your application before you run the tests. So I promised that I will come back. Uh, now it's the time. So I need to deploy my application. So I need to deploy my application. Just install it. I, I can install it on 
one on one VM or more. It depends. And I also need to install some application that will help me to to run it. So maybe it needs storage, maybe it needs databases, and what and all the things that you can think about it. Uh, does Lago can help me? Sure, it can help me. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, I can hear myself. Okay, so does Lago can help me? Sure. Uh, Lago provides me two ways to deploy my application. The first one is using bash scripts, and the second one, the cooler one, is to use Ansible. Uh, if I need to define Ansible in one uh, sentence, it's an automation engine, uh, which automates uh, application deployment and configuration. And uh, I will uh, explain a bit uh, in the next slide. Okay, so using uh, bash scripts. Uh, on the screen, you can see an init file. Uh, that has two domain definitions. Domain is equal to a VM. And we added to the domain definition an entry which describes a list of scripts that should be run against uh, each VM. So the first, the first VM, my app server, um, the, will, will, the script setup server will be run on it uh, when I will hit Lago deploy. Um, a few notes about running scripts, uh, bash scripts. Uh, the order matters. You can see that it's a list. So the order of scripts matter. We are using SSH to invoke the scripts. Um, and we are doing it in parallel on, on all the VMs, OK? So in each VM, there is a linear order of the scripts, but we are doing it in parallel uh, on all the VMs. Using Ansible, uh, one cool feature of Ansible is that you can group VMs. Here we, ans we insert to the, v to the init file a group association. So for example, my app server is part of the group. So we can add a group association in the init file. As you can see, so my app server is part uh, of the my app servers group. And now I can invoke uh, Ansible. Uh, Obviously, I need to specify it on which VMs to act. I can use this context manager called Ansible Inventory Temp File, which returns a temp file with all the information that Ansible needed to run uh, the commands on the VMs. And in this example, we can see that I'm specifying Ansible to run only on the VMs that are part of the group My App Servers. OK, putting it all together, if I need to summarize all the things that we saw today and put it on one slide, is that on the left side, we can see our virtual environment, all the resources inside them, the virtual environment that we've created from the init file. On the right side, an high-level uh, view of our tests, which consists three stages, which are deploy, run test, and collect artifacts, and our environment object in the middle, which helps us, which helps us to access those um, uh, resources. Okay, so it's time for uh, Q&A, but I will insert one last sentence uh, to summarize all the things up, all those things. Um, I think that we all agree that system tests are important. But let's be honest, I think that the chance that uh, a programmer will wake up in morning, in the morning and, say, and will say to himself, wow, today is a great day to write system tests, it's not, it's not that big. But uh, I hope that now that we introduced Lago to you, this chance is uh, much more greater. And uh, we showed you that it's can be, it can be simple to write system tests. So thank you for your time. Um, one more thing, on Wednesday we have a workshop that we are going to teach how to write system tests and get into more technical details, so I invite you to come and uh, join. And we are open for questions. It's written in Python, first of all, which we prefer. Uh, sorry? Oh, how Lago differ from, Vag from Vagrant? Vagrant is also an automation tool for uh, running VMs. So we put an emphasis on uh, using Lago as a CI tool. And, is, and as part of this uh, effort, we are inserting a lot of tools that helps us to uh, run it in the CI. 
And we didn't elaborate on those stuff right here because it's a bit complicated and uh, we can see them tomorrow on the shop, okay? And we can talk about it later if someone uh, wants to know uh, more. Thank you. Yes? No, currently we are only supporting uh, Linux VMs. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks,